Before we get to work on the car today, I wanna to let you guys know, quick little reminder, I'm giving this thing away. You only have three days left from the time this video goes live to get entered in to win this exact car. Every three bucks you spend is one entry to win this beautiful 2015 Final Edition Evo 10. On today's episode of building a 500 wheel horsepower Evo 10, we are gonna be installing all of these goodies right here. So yesterday we installed a new AGT 57 millimeter turbo. Now that isn't gonna do anything for us if we don't install a new intercooler, intercooler piping, a new BOV, and a new intake. The car currently has the new turbo, new downpipe, full exhaust system. Remaining, we have the fuel system, and all of this stuff right here. We did also install a new ACT clutch while the motor was out. The engine is 100% stock from the oil pan all the way to the valve cover, but 500 wheel horsepower on Evo 10, it's fairly simple to do with high quality parts. Let's start off by installing the new ETS three inch front mount intercooler. That bumper needs to be removed. Evo 10s come factory with a front mount intercooler. The ETS should bolt up in the factory location with all of the factory hardware, factory grommets, and the factory hangers. Let's get this bumper removed. To remove the factory intercooler, here's what we need to do. There's a bolt there, bolt on that side, lower intercooler pipe clamp is right there, hanger there, hanger there. This car currently doesn't have the upper intercooler pipe on it. I had to remove that for the turbo install, but factory, there would be a coupler right here with a 10 millimeter clamp. Pull that guy off, pull all those other pieces off and the intercooler is removed. Intercooler is fully mounted up. Now we're gonna go ahead and take care of the lower intercooler pipe. Now this isn't necessary. We probably could have hit our power goal with the factory lower intercooler pipe. The upper is a must to replace, but the lower probably would have been fine. But I did decide to pick up the ETS lower unit. So let's go ahead and get that installed. The lower intercooler pipe is fully installed. Now we just need to get all the clamps on. 
So with the lower intercooler pipe, there is two different size clamps. We have the 67 to 75 millimeter size clamp, and we have one single 73 to 81 millimeter size clamp. This one is for the throttle body, and the smaller ones are for all the other couplers. Lower intercooler pipe is complete. We do have the BOV piping, but we'll have to take care of that later when we get the intake on. For now, let's move on to the upper intercooler pipe. Two pieces here. We have this one reducer coupler. This one will go from this upper pipe to the turbo. And we have a straight coupler that goes from right here to the intercooler. Before we install the intake, let's go ahead and get the electronic boost control solenoid on. We're doing a Cobb 3 port on this car. Of course, currently the factory one is still installed. So there's two solenoids. You have the lower one, the black one, that stays on the car, and then you have the upper, which is the brown one. That is the one that's getting replaced. You need the lower one on with the wiring connector plugged in, otherwise you will throw a check engine light. So leave that black guy on there, and we're replacing, like I said, the brown one. The electronic boost controller is on, fully plumbed. As far as plumbing goes, two goes down to the wastegate and port three goes to the turbo inlet. Port one, you can leave open or that would run back to your intake tube. We are ready for the ETS cold air intake. Now I will be replacing our factory inlet with this here MAP inlet. Let's pull off the factory one and I'll show you guys why. So the turbo we installed has a three inch inlet. The factory turbo inlet is a two and a half. Our intake is a three inch. So it'd go three inch and then it goes down to two and a half with the factory back to the three inch on the EGT turbo. Now this MAP inlet is a three inch. So the whole intake system is now gonna be a three inch inlet. This guy would be a massive restriction. We definitely do not want that. When you buy the ETS three inch intake, it comes with the reducer. So this is a three to two and a half for the factory inlet. Now, thankfully I have a straight three inch here, a little bit dirty, but cleaner up. And this is what we'll need to go from the three inch intake pipe to that new three inch MAP inlet.
the full ETS intake is installed. That port right there runs back to the valve cover. That small port goes to port number one on the EBCS or just cap that off. Now we can do the BOV. So we have those two pipes and the BOV of choice today is a go fast bits BOV. These things sound pretty dang good. The car is 100% complete and we should be ready for a first start. Now, of course, all of these parts that we are installing today and yesterday, the turbo, the intake, especially the, the boost controller, all that stuff does require a tune. So if you're gonna start modding your car, what I would highly, highly recommend, get all the mods done and then tune the car at the very end. Now I'm gonna go ahead, fire it up, make sure everything's good to go. We can go on a small drive, just monitoring the AFRs, the air fuel ratio of the car making sure that is within reason now of course we don't want to do any sort of pulls very very light throttle cruising only but with all that being said let's fire it up some nice mics on the car, a mic on the intake side, mic on the exhaust side. And like I said, we can go for a very, very light cruise, but nothing over like 10% throttle, 15% throttle, just light tip in only. Our first drive on the setup went very, very well. No issues to report whatsoever. And as you guys heard, this thing sounds freaking amazing. Nice little turbo spool from the new AGT 57 mil. Intake, of course, sounds great. I haven't been able to get on it enough, of course, yet to crack open the wastegate, but I know how it sounds and it's gonna sound amazing. So really all we need left to get this thing on the dyno and tune it is the fuel system. So we have our injectors, the fuel pump, the flex fuel kit. We're gonna need a bigger map sensor. That's just a factory map sensor on there. 
I'll probably be going to a four, three or four bar, most likely a four bar map sensor on the car. And that's really about it. If you guys would like any of these goodies that we installed today, the upper pipe, the lower pipe, the intercooler itself, the intake, or the electronic boost control solenoid, I will go ahead and link all that down below for you guys. I really love how this bay turned out. Nice factory OEM plus looking. It's not gonna really change much. We do have a different fuel rail, but I think I'm gonna maintain that engine cover. I just love how OEM looking this bay is. It's very, very nice. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out, and I'll see you guys tomorrow when we knock out the fuel system.